behind me. We've been talking about him and talking about him and his books, what he loves, what he loves to do, and he's here with us today. So here is, from Vermont, a long haul yesterday through snow and all sorts of fun weather, <laughs> Steve Swinburne. Yay. Wow, thank you. I'm going to say good morning, and you're going to say good morning, Steve. Good morning. No, let me look at you. Sit up straight. Let me see all the smiles. Oh, you're looking gorgeous. You're looking handsome. You're looking beautiful. I can't believe it. How amazing you look. I see some good hair days out there, some not so good hair days. But let's not talk about hair, especially mine. I'm so happy to be here at this school called West Elementary. Yesterday, I drove over from Vermont, where I live. Took six hours to drive over to Buffalo through the snow and the sleet and the avalanches. But I finally got here, and now I'm here with you all day to talk to you kids about what I love to talk about. Well, every week I worked on getting them to know about him. I asked him some of his favorites, and of course the kids want to know that, where he lives and he, that he loves dark chocolate and all these little things like that are very important to the kids to know. But also the students want, you know, need to know his books, otherwise they won't know who he is and um, how he writes and what he loves. So he loves animals, loves to write about animals, and so that was easy to get them excited about that. So we reviewed at least one book every week that I got to see the students. So we went over at least four to six books, I would say. One time Haley came up to me and she said, Hey, Dad, could we put a birdhouse in our backyard? I said, Sure, sweetheart. So I built one of these things. What's this thing called? Birdhouse. Sure, you guys know a birdhouse. So we put up this birdhouse, and you're not going to believe who came to live in the birdhouse. Of course, if an alligator get to came to live in the birdhouse, it would be called an alligator house. I don't think an alligator would fit in there. Uh, well, when I first started writing books for kids, I had no idea that you could visit schools with your books. Um, some of my friends started talking about how you can take your books to schools and visit. So I started with my two kids. I have two girls, and I went to their school and did some programs, and it slowly built up from there. And I've been doing visiting schools around the country for about... 12 years. I mean, I think the, the younger kids, the K and 1, are, um, excuse me, they're more, um, they're more into a livelier, uh, fast-moving program. With the 4s and 5s, uh, I can get into a little bit more issue-oriented stuff, uh, a little bit more, um, you know, throw a little bit more education their way. But, you know, I love working with K through 6, all the different grades. Wow. On the count of three, I want to see if you can do this too. Let me do it one more time. Think, listen carefully. Oh, 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 oh. Ready? One, two, three, go. <laughs> you guys are good. Can you do this? Oh. <laughs> Don't forget to use the head. Oh. <laughs> nice job. Some people believe that sounds like, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? It's a southern bird. Glad you got that. I want this is to help encourage them not only to read but to get excited about reading, excited about authors, goofy ones especially like him, and just how much fun reading is and how much there's to know and to love and just so many different topics out there. Obviously his main focus is a lot of his animals, but it's just, I mean, and that's just as perfect for this age group, elementary, but yes, that's the focus, to get them excited and to meet at least one author in their lifetime, hopefully much more than that. Okay, hold it up here so these kids can hear me. Don't knock me out. Don't poke me in the eye. Here, hold it right there so Steve, Steve can hear these. These kids can hear me. Here's what I want you to do. While Jared's holding my words, Jacob's holding the microphone, Steve's going to play his drum. Can you make a bird beat? <coughs> make a little bird beat. Can you guys say one, two, three? Ask any spoon bill, cross bill, emu, cockatoo, mockingbird, magpie, avocet, or parakeet. The neatest thing besides two feet without question is a beak. A bird beak's chisel, a bird beak's hook. Bird beaks give the birds a look. Pickaxe, a rolling pin, fishing net, straw, sledgehammer, army knife, needle point, claw. A beak can pry, a beak can preen. The shape is straight, bent in between. A beak is a spoon, a beak is a slicer, a beak is a scraper, stab and spiker. Come in black, pink, white, or tan. Red, green, blue, as a wild toucan. The curlew probes, the hummingbird sips, the vulture dines without a bib. Kites bite, sometimes pick, skimmers from the coolest tricks. Build a nest, 
climb a branch, crack a seed, cratch, crack a seed, flick a flea, find a foe, hatch. Ask any flamingo, Fulmar, bobolink, bufflehead, woodpecker, whip a will, pelican, puffin, yellow breasted chat. The world's best tool is a beacon, that's that. Big hand for my two friends, Jared and Jacob. Woo-hoo! Thank you, guys. Um, what really helped me was, believe it or not, Winston Churchill's words that led the British people through um, the Blitz, the bombing of London. Never give up, never give up, never give up. I had those words posted over my desk. Um, and I believe these kids, it's a message I try to get to these kids, not to give up. You know, I've had a lot of rejections in my life. You know, uh, people turning you down, you never be a writer, you never be an author. Well, guess what? Ten years later, I've got 20 books out. So those kids need that message of not giving up because uh, the, they'll get rejections in their life. They're no good for basketball. They're no good for ballet. They're no good for this. People always are telling kids not to, that they're no good for something. But I'm telling them they are good and they should keep trying, keep practicing. They'll get there. Follow your dream, follow your passion. When you read, this is what happens. Brain, you get brain power. Okay, who's going to raise their hands and promise me? Get those hands up, get those hands up, get those hands up. Reach for the sky. You are going to be good readers because good readers become good writers. Now pat yourselves on the back. Now give yourselves a big round of applause. You guys did a great job. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later, alligators. With Mrs. Modlowski, how did the tutoring, tutoring session first get started? I work with Mrs. Karen Keppel at East Senior High School. She works with the students from the Education Academy there, and those high school juniors come over here and tutor our fifth and sixth graders at Northwood. Do you see like an improvement in the students' grades after coming to the tutoring session? Absolutely, and the students will tell you themselves they feel much more confident after having a chance to work with the high schoolers. So you feel that this student or tutoring session is actually a great benefit to all the students and everything? Absolutely. It benefits both our students and the high school students. Hi, I'm here with Dante. And what um, subjects do you get tutored on? Math. And what's your favorite part about being tutored? Well, the teachers get to help me and I get to really understand it. Okay, and do you feel you're doing better in school because of it? Yeah, now I get good grades and um, I'm doing really good. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm here with Andrew, and what um, subjects do you get tutored in? Um, first, we got tutored in ELA and math for the um, ELA and math test. And now, we're, um, now after the ELA test is done, we're doing only math. So, And then um, we get help with homework. All right, and um, what's your favorite part about being tutored? Um, it helps because sometimes I don't understand something during the day. And it will, and um, the high school tutors will help us with what we don't know. Okay. And you feel you're doing better in school because of this? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Hi, I'm here with Amanda at Northwood, and she's one of the tutors. And how do you think the kids do in school now? Because they're getting tutored. Better. I think Better. they are. And how did the tutoring sessions get started? Um, through the Academy of Education at what, East Senior. What subjects do the kids get tutored on? Um, math and English, usually they do reading and we practice adding and subtracting and multiplying. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm here with Melanie, and um, what subject do you get tutored on? Math. I like it a lot. You like it a lot? Mm -hmm. And what's your favorite part about being tutored? I like it because it helps me get better grades. I didn't understand math at first. And do you th feel you're doing better in school because of this? Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you. You're welcome.
I'm Jeremy Bartos here at East East Elementary with the principal here at East. And Debbie, what did you have? What role did you have in getting ready for the play? Me personally, I try to support the kids in this project and Miss Del Sandra, their teacher, because I think it means such a great deal to them. It's such an awesome experience, something kids don't typically get a chance to do until secondary grades. Now, what do you feel the kids have learned from this experience? Oh, they've they've learned a great deal of structure teamwork. We've had uh, a couple incidents during this play where lead players have gotten ill. We you s might have seen the player with the broken leg and the show went on and they did an amazing job. Now, what was the best part for you and why? The best part, seeing the faces on those children on the stage today. Okay, you have a nice day, thank you. Thanks. Hello, I'm Jeremy Bartos here at East Elementary with Megan Morano. Megan, what did you do with your class to get ready for tonight's play? We did after school practices and hour, sometimes two hour practices and during school and pretty much a lot of practicing at home and I don't really know. Now you were the understudy for Jasmine, right? And you're taking the lead part. Megan, what was your favorite part in this play? Um, it used to be Friend Like Me, but when I got Jasmine, I started to like a whole new world because I got to do more things in it than as I, when I was a narrator. So. And what have you learned from taking part in this play? That being in a play takes a lot of hard work. Like you can't just say, oh I'm going to memorize these lines, I'm going to be amazing. It's really you got to practice and you have to make sure you know it or you're going to have a blank out on stage. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Jeremy Bartos here at East Elementary with Costas. Costas, uh, what did you do to get ready to prepare for the play? I did, um, I practiced my gymnastics on my trampoline, and I was just dancing to the music that I found out that it was going to be performed. What is your favorite part in this play? Prince Ali. And why? Because you do dance, you dance and there's uh, stuffed animals and they throw them up. It's really neat. Now, what experience did you gain from ha uh, having part in this play? You learn that it that it it takes everyone's concentration and different skills to actually do the play. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Jeremy Bartos here at East Elementary with Alec. Alec, what experience did you gain from being in the play? Um, I kind of gained the experience to know how to do things. For example, we followed lots of directions on how to exit and enter, like stage left, stage right, center stage. And what was your favorite part of being in this play? Um, probably the end of the sixth scene, which is the Why Me reprise, which we'll be doing later in the show. Do you feel that you gained enough experience to do this in the future? Yeah, I think I'll be ready when we do it either in middle school or high school. Thank you. Have a great performance. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jeremy Bartos here at East Ele Elementary with Patricia, a teacher here at East. Now, Patricia, uh, what role did you have in getting getting ready for the play? Uh, well, we worked with the music teacher, making sure she had the time that she needed and the support from the classroom. Any time that she needed to have some extra help or the children needed something, that was our role. We, we helped to supervise and... Anything that was necessary, we did. What do you feel the kids would t take in from this experience in the play? It was a wonderful experience. It was something they'll never forget. Um, the, the drama, uh, the lines, the interaction, the direction, just the idea of producing something that was of such a caliber for sixth graders was wonderful. Now, what, do you f what was your favorite part in the play? Well, um, Jafar was is is in my classroom as is the parrot. So I particularly like them as is as is Jasmine. So I I actually liked all of it. I thought it was wonderful and the flying carpet. <laughs> Very clever. Thank you, ma'am. I'm Jeremy Bartos here with Coach Cantafio, and Coach, do you, uh, how do you feel about Jeremy Des going to D1 College? 
I couldn't be more happy for them and their family and more proud. One of my proudest coaching moments, believe it or not, was when I got to sit in my classroom when the main coach looked at Jeremy and his mom and said, Mom, you're not going to have to pay for college. Jeremy's, we're offering him a full scholarship, and that to me is, is uh, the greatest thing we can do with high school athletics. And um, they're two great, great people. They set a very high standard, and it's also very special that they're going to be able to go to the same place together and play. So I'm looking forward to, to watching them in the next few years. I know they're going to make us very proud, and I'm now a Black Bear fan. You feel that they're going to grow and mature over at Maine West? There's no doubt in my mind the reason why they were given these scholarships is because of their character, because of their work ethic. And there's no doubt in my mind that when they get there and the attention that they'll get and the opportunities that they'll still um, have in front of them, that they're going to definitely succeed. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Guys. I'm Jerry Bartos here at Des Randall. Des, how does it feel going to the D1 college? Yeah, it feels great. Uh, good. Get to go somewhere with my best friend. Yeah. And uh, something I always dreamed of. I couldn't ask for better. Do you feel you're going to grow and mature there as well as tear it up there? Yeah, definitely. Um, when I went there, uh, we went on a visit this past weekend and uh, just felt real comfortable with the environment and uh, everything that was going on down there. And, and the coaches spoke uh, highly of me and they said I have a great chance of playing. Does you know what you're going to major in over at Maine? Right now, um, I'm undecided. Uh, I was going to go in as a uh, major in psychology or journalism, but um, right now I'm just going to go in as undecided. And then uh, after the first couple of semesters, then, then I'll figure out what I want to do. Thank you and congratulations. You. I'm Jeremy Bartos here with Jeremy Kelly. Jeremy, how does it feel going to D1 College? It's amazing. I mean, uh, you know, I've been wanting to since I was a little kid, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, things always weren't easy, definitely weren't easy. I mean, you just got to keep working, and that's what I did. And, I mean, the, it's really unbelievable because only 1%, less than 1% kids play Division One football, and it's just, you know, it's amazing. I beat those odds, and to go on with a full scholarship is something special. Do you feel you're going to grow and mature in college as well as on the field? Yeah, definitely, on and off the field. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to taking some challenging courses up there, you know, really and develop, um, you know, mentally and, and as well as physically, um, you know, and intellectually, I mean, to be able to, just as hard lifting weights and doing all that as it is to sit down and read a book, you know, a whole chapter or whatever you got to do for your classes. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Do you know what you're going to major in up in Maine? Um, right now I'm looking to major in psychology, um, but possibly even sociology uh, or maybe even get into business. You know, I'm still kind of undecided, but um, those are the three top choices. So, Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, man. Hello, I'm Jeremy Bartos here at Mr. McSwan, the principal at West Seneca West. Mr. McSwan, do you feel that having Jeremy and Des go to D1 College is great representation at West? I think, um, you know, alone, this is uh, a great opportunity for two of them to be showcased. They're both fine young men, great athletes, and uh, they, they do represent us very well. Thank you. Jeremy Bartos here at West Elementary with Mrs. Badger, the principal here at West. Now, who came up with this idea of the 100th Day Celebration? Well, when the school opened about seven years ago, it was just the natural thing to do. I think be before the school became a K-6 building, they had a K-2 situation here, and the teachers were already doing the 100 Day Celebration. So we just ran with it when the school turned into a K-6 school. Now, did uh, you have any part in setting up or anything? Or in the decorations at all? Believe it or don't, no, I did not. I did see the agenda, and they had asked that I just be the MC for the event, but that was it. What you saw in there was all parents and teachers working together as a team. Now, I heard that the, the 100th logo was your original idea. Who came up Curious George? I believe it was the teachers, because they do focus on the literature in the classroom, and then with a little bit of uh, discovery they realized that the author would have been 100 years old today so it was just a beautiful fit. Thank you and everything looks great. Hello I'm Jeremy Bartos here at West Elementary Mrs. Kishbaugh. Now what did you do to get ready for the setup in the, with the 100th day celebration? 
Uh, there was quite a bit of planning involved. We worked with uh, our PTA to organize all the activities, all the songs, um, to get the children ready for the celebration. Now, did you uh, enjoy yourself in there? Oh, absolutely, especially with our wonderful principal leading the way. <laughs> what was your favorite part of the Hunter's Day celebration? Um, I'd have to say our theme of Curious George this year, and the moms did a lot to decorate and, and get it ready to celebrate um, the 100 years of um, one of the authors of Curious George. Thank you for your time. Okay. Hello, I'm Jeremy Bartos here at West Elementary with Jen. Now, how did you feel about the Hunter's Day celebration? I thought it was great. I think the kids really enjoyed it. Um, a lot of good activities going on, a lot of singing, fun, yelling. What do you think the kids have gained from this experience and being in this Hunter's Day? It maybe just boost their confidence level, having a lot of fun, you know, counting. Jeremy Bartos here at West Elementary with Allie and Michael. Now, what was your guys' favorite part in the Hunter's Day celebration? My favorite part is when we had lots of fun. How about you? My favorite part was having a lot of fun too. What role did you have in getting the 100th Day celebration together? Well, at West Elementary, we're all a big family here and everybody works together. Um, I did help organize the event, but it was due to many parents, a lot of volunteers, and a lot of children's hard work putting the event together. Now, who came up with all the decoration ideas and the Big 100 out there? Who came up with all this? The Big 100 we thought of um, early on when we first started planning the event, and we recruited uh, one of the grandfathers, Pat Kelly, to, he took a lot of time making the 100 sign that was started way back in November, and then we had children painting the, the paw prints, which is the school logo. Um, a lot of the decorations we kind of add from year to year, and um, it's just a team effort. Now, did you have, did you enjoy the hundredth day celebration? It was wonderful. The principal here really, she puts her whole heart and soul into the school, and it's it's a wonderful remembrance for the children. Thank you. Everything looks great. Hello, I'm John Clark here, East Senior, uh, with the uh, organizer of the musical now. How did you get assigned to do the musical? Well, I am the advisor to the drama club here, and the drama club works with the music department to place and put together a musical every year. And, uh, was it hard to get students prepared and on task uh, as far as getting motivated for the play? Um, well, this is a show that not a whole lot of people know, and it's not done a whole lot because it is so very difficult. It is difficult because of the music, it's Stephen Sondheim's music, and it requires very astute musicians in order to do this, also musicians. So the actors, we had to wait until we had a group of people who would be able to can handle that, and we did. We had uh, very smart singers, we had uh, very good actors, and we thought that they could pull this off very well. Now, uh, what was the what would you say the biggest difficulty was getting ready for the, getting the students ready for the play? Because there's a lot of music in here and it's a lot of very complicated music, it was probably doing that. And Mr. Ferugia, who is in charge of the music here, um, prepared the students. They've been singing. They sang for about four weeks before we started staging anything. Uh, have you noticed a lot of improvement that the students have made as far as coming along throughout the uh, play process? Well, there is, a, there is an acting process that one goes through in order to prepare for this. First of all, we did a lot of background information. We read the original Grimm's fairy tales that this show is based on so that they found out what the original story was like, not just the Disney version. Then they developed their own characters. They wrote character backgrounds. They, they developed a character walk and a personality and a background and a history. And then we staged everything. And then we got a chance to watch the original Broadway show to find for them that we could possibly work for us. And then we did a videotape of several of our rehearsals and which they saw to see how well that they are working. Now, um, what, was, what were some of the preparations that were needed to go into the play to get it ready for everybody to see? 
Well, when you get a script, the musicians get their music, but that's all. So a set has to be designed, costumes have to be designed, a crew needs to be developed, uh, sets have to be painted, publicity has to be developed, makeup has to be designed. So everything in that area has got to be done. Right, well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, everything looks great. I hope everything goes well for you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello, I'm John Clark here at East Senior, uh, filming for the musical. Now, what was your favorite part of doing the musical? Um, I think rehearsing, because all of us are so close of friends, and it's so much fun being all together. I just like that. <laughs> and, uh, what was some of the preparation that you needed to get ready for this? Uh, a lot of singing, and I had to take vitamins to stay healthy for this, and go over lines a lot, a lot. Now, what was the most difficult part about memorizing your lines? When, you, like, when they come in, it's kind of confusing. You don't know like what line comes when, whenever. Now, is this something that you guys would like to do again sometime? Yeah, I would definitely choose to do this again. It was a good experience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, I'm John Clark here at East Senior, uh, filming the musical. Now, what was the biggest challenge in getting ready for the musical? Probably the biggest challenge would be putting everything together with the actors and the things can just go wrong like that. Now, um, what when did you start preparation for this? Um, well, we had auditions in November, so we had our parts in November, and we got our scripts, so we started working on music, and working probably staging and everything since January, so probably about two and a half months. Now, what was your favorite part about doing the musical? Um, just like being with all of my friends and doing something that I love to do with everyone that I love. And, uh, yeah. How about you? Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> um, is are, are you looking forward to doing musicals in the future because of your experience uh, with this one? Yeah. <laughs> I, I would definitely like to do something like this when I get older. I really like doing it. It's, it's fun. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I'm John Clark with another one of the actors in the musical. Now, how did you get involved in doing the play? Well, I've always loved drama and performing and singing, so just every year since I was a freshman, I've been doing the musical, so I just did it again this year. Now, did you learn a lot uh, with gaining experience going throughout the musicals? Yes, definitely. It's like, this year it was a lot more difficult music than the previous years we've done it. I've just learned a lot more, act I have a lot more acting experience, a lot more, more musically inclined, I guess you can say. <laughs> now, uh, what, what part are you dressed for today? Um, I am Cinderella, actually. Really? So you're one of the main, main roles? Yes, I am. Now, was it really, really difficult to get in, uh, ready and learn all your lines for the play? Well, not lines so much, because Cinderella's always usually singing. The more, more difficult part is definitely the music, I'd have to say. And how long did it take you to prepare for this role? I don't know, about two and a half months, around there, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much, and I hope you have a great time. Thank you. Thank you.